good happy Tuesday evening July 7 2020 I'm Riley King and welcome to this Tuesday evening edition of the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King network we have a lot of news to get to this Tuesday evening so let's begin First step, COVID-19 in New Hampshire, what you need to know information. Let's take a look at that right now. And here's a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 5,914 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 2,290,000. 2,000 number of people in the United States who have tested positive. 382 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 574 number of people who have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 130, 208 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. Now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire current cases of COVID-19. Manchester, 128. And let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 1569. And now let's take a look at these charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple. Daily new positive COVID-19 cases. In the orange, new hospitalizations. In the red are the deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here, current cases in the purple, current total, current COVID-19 cases, and in the orange, current hospitalizations. And let's take a look at this chart here, total cases in the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases, in the orange, total hospitalizations, in the red, deaths, and in the blue, recovered. And let's take a look at this chart here, age group of cases. Female and male of cases, and risk information. And let's take a look at this chart here infection, hospitalizations, and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here deaths, percent of New Hampshire population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalization. And again, your common symptoms, fever, lack of milk, cough, chills, difficult breathing, nausea and vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads, and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Two more New Hampshire COVID-19 deaths announced. Governor says efforts continue to help New Hampshire economy. As two more deaths connected to COVID-19 were announced Tuesday in New Hampshire, Governor Chris Sununu said efforts to help the state economy recover were ongoing. Health officials said two Granite Staters who died were connected with long-term care facilities. There have been 384 COVID-19 deaths in New Hampshire since the start of the pandemic. Officials said 19 new cases were confirmed, bringing the state's total to 5,932 cases during the pandemic. Three more people have been hospitalized, and health officials said 577 Granite Staters have been hospitalized with COVID-19 during the pandemic. The latest numbers of currently active cases and hospitalizations has not yet been released for Tuesday. Sadinu said relevantly low number of confirmed cases show that the precautions Granite Staters are taking are working to help keep the virus in check. 
AFP cited the latest unemployment numbers, which showed an 11% decline in new claims over the past week as evidence that people are increasingly able to get back to work. There were still nearly 86,000 total claims filed in New Hampshire. Sununu said the Self-Employment Livelihood Fund Program, an effort to help self-employed Granite Staters, is now taking applications. The program works similar to the Main Street Relief Program, which has aimed at covering some of the financial losses suffered by New Hampshire small businesses. The SELF program will cover some losses for self-employed business owners. Applicants will be accepted through July 17th at revenuenewhampshire.gov. Merrimack Assisted Living Facility shuts down over per shores from COVID-19. Owners say staffing has become a problem during pandemic. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. Captain Robbie Knievel here with my friends at world famous Lee Custom Cycles. When I'm not jumping canyons, I'm jumping on great fields with Lee Custom Cycles. Hi, I'm Captain Robbie Knievel here at... Here at... Currently, there are 21 residents in Merrimack who call Rose Haven Assisted Living home, but not for much longer. This has been a very heartbreaking decision for my family. After 30 years in the business, the decision has been made by the family to shut their doors because of COVID-19. The COVID pandemic has put just many more pressures on us during this time. Chief among them, staffing. While Goudreau says the home has remained COVID-free, one staffer had to self-quarantine, meaning others had to pick up her hours. Work our whole day shift and then maybe work third shift. Our third shift girl had to be out for two weeks. Goudreau says once the pandemic ends, she sees more problems ahead. The regulation changes that we're going to see to assisted living um, is going to be a real challenge for small homes. Asked what she will miss the most, Goudreau has an unusual answer. The two o'clock in the morning, Cindy, I need you. The business has also been home to Goudreau and her family as they live in the building, as well as working there along with her dad and two older brothers. Now that too will soon be in the past. The other thing that I will miss is being with my family every day because I know it's gonna change our whole family network. Right now, the plan is to close this facility at the end of this month. But if this sign put up by neighbors is any indication, they may be gone, but they won't be forgotten. In Merrimack, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your U.S. stock market and see how your U.S. stock market closed for this Tuesday evening. And here's a look at that U.S. stock market for all of you. Good Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the red one down. Your Nasdaq closed in the red one down. S&P 500 closed in the red one down. Gold closed in the green one up. Oil closed in the red one down. U.S. 10 year closed flat. Air slash USD closed in the green one up. And the air closed in the green one up. S&P 500 falls for the first time in six days. NASDAQ retreats from record high. Stocks fell on Tuesday as a rally in mega cap tech shares lost stem and concerns about the coronavirus outbreak dampened investor sentiment. Georgia governor declares state of emergency. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News, Good Morning America. We want to 
focus now on Georgia, also hard hit by the coronavirus outbreak, also hit by a surge of violence. The governor has now declared a state of emergency there, activating up to a thousand National Guard troops. Atlanta's mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, will join us live in just a moment. But first, let's start with Steve Olson Sami with the latest. Good morning to you, Steve. Good morning to you, TJ. There are many here who feel that the governor didn't really need to do this to put troops again on the streets of Atlanta, that this was a political move. But the governor is saying that if the city can't control its gun violence, then he will. Military vehicles and as many as a thousand troops from the Georgia National Guard are protecting state buildings in Atlanta this morning after Georgia's governor declared a state of emergency. The troops are a response to gun violence that wounded more than 30 people and killed five. Eight-year-old Sicoria Turner was killed outside this Wendy's restaurant by men with long guns who set up barricades and had taken over the street after 27-year-old Rayshard Brooks was killed here at the hands of a white police officer. The restaurant had become a memorial, but there were still shootings. These aren't police officers shooting people on the streets of Atlanta. These are members of the community shooting each other. The extraordinary amount of gun violence is hitting cities across the country and hitting black communities the hardest. In Chicago this holiday weekend, 77 people were shot. 14 of them died, including seven-year-old Natalie Wallace. You got everything, everything, everything. everything. And in New York City, gun incidents were up 130% compared to last year, according to the NYPD. They say the push for police reforms have made it harder for officers to protect residents of any color. They are afraid if they're, if they're making an arrest that if their knee goes on the back of someone that they are fighting their life for, that they could be prosecuted. Investigators here are offering a $10,000 reward for any information that leads them to the two gunmen who they believe killed this little girl. George Steve and Tommy, thanks. Well, hey there, G. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching this evening edition. Have a great rest of your evening. I'll see you back here to tomorrow for another broadcast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and bye everyone.